Welcome back everyone. I'm showing a coil winder that uh, I built a few weeks ago and I'll be using this to uh, rewind that fill coil on the 41280 so I wanted to show this with you. I had some scrap material left over from uh, building a new workbench just for the electronic side of my restoration so uh, here you can see I've got some 2x4s, uh, some furring strips, some plywood, and again, I'm just using uh, pieces I already had uh, cut, except for um, the uh, furring strips and the 2x4s, uh, which are uh, 6 inches in height. As you can see, the design is simple. At the back will be my spool of new wire, magnet wire. The center is my guide point, and toward the front facing me will be motor driven. And that's where the bobbin or new spool will be placed. A few items I didn't have laying around was the self-aligning pillow block flange bearings that you see here. I used four of those, and again, there's a piece of 3 8 inch solid aluminum rod that goes through these. But again, that creates a nice um, spindle, per se, for the existing uh, formers. As depicted here, you can see I've got the self-aligning pillow blocks laid out, and I'm just measuring uh, I think the height I chose, um, and I ended up uh, modifying this just a bit, and the uh, final design was about three inches up. So again, that piece of um, two by four that you see here is a six inch height, and I just split the difference, and I have the center of these mounted at uh, three inches. One thing that I did as well, I drilled uh, holes all the way through the two by four. I think in some of the photos here originally, I only did that on one side, but uh, there's some reasons and advantages for going all the way through, and I'll try to expand on that in just a bit. Just to keep my cost down as well, I just leveraged some of the uh, deck screws that I already had on hand. They work perfect. In this application, I had various sizes because, again, as I was building my new uh, workbench and also putting some shelves up to uh, house my uh, radio collection, um, I had an abundance of uh, leftover uh, screws, so why not take advantage of the, uh, the junk pile or the remaining pile? You can see here that uh, solid aluminum rod that I talked about, and you can see the flanges mounted and it just kind of coming together. Again, I don't even have um, the uh, screws in the top section yet. This is kind of everything kind of laid out as I was uh, building this thing again. I drew out a few plans in my head, and then as I started putting the thing together, it um, kind of came into shape. So, um, again, a few modifications since these photos have been taken, but uh, very, very minor. Okay, now we're looking at that centerpiece uh, wire guide that I created. It's nothing more than a three-quarter inch piece of dowel rod. Again, I drilled holes in those two by fours, a little over an inch. I had some leftover cardboard tubing that I inserted just to give a nice smooth transition from left to right, right to left. And you can see here I'll be putting a uh, roller on in just a moment. It's a uh, sliding door roller. I had it in my junk box. If I had it to do over, I would have probably picked a V-groove roller, but this seems to work well. Again, I inserted some uh, threaded rod here and uh, made just a little bit of a modification a little later on uh, just to have it swivel. Uh, this particular uh, nylon roller is uh, so slick, the magnet wire actually just rolls over the top of it more so than making the roller itself go around because there's not that much pressure itself on the wire. You can see here in the pictures I'm showing, this was my uh, final design for now. If I had it to do over, I would probably move this section closer to the receiving bobbin so you can get better accuracy uh, for overlaps. Again, you can see here, uh, just using more of the leftover uh, decking screws, uh, my uh, impact uh, tool, and uh, just putting everything together. Okay, after a little brainstorming, I elected to use these rubber stoppers that you see here, drilled holes, uh, right at 3 8 of an inch in diameter to match the uh, aluminum rod that I used. Here I have some springs inserted, and again, they're placed on each side of the bobbin. And I'm actually able to use the rubber pieces stoppers up against the form factor 
and not make a spindle for the uh, receiving side of the wire or at least that's my hopes at this point you can see uh, again some modifications here a better job of showing those uh, flat washers that I installed here you can see I'm just using some tape on the aluminum rod itself to build that up and create a nice spindle for the wire spool itself to feed off of. Again here just more photos along the way. Again some of the photos that you see here is before I made some of those slight uh, alterations to the design itself. But I am doing a mock up here. I've got some uh, 36 um, gauge magnet wire on. I am feeding it onto the uh, bobbin that I will use. It's the existing uh, coal former. And I was just going through the motions itself. Again, not trying to be accurate on overlaps. More or less just checking the tension of the wire itself. And again, I did make some slight modifications here. Uh, just to make sure that uh, I didn't have the wire too taut. Okay, now it's time to get the motor hooked up and the controller, and let's take this thing for a test drive.